All of my printed parts are made out of PLA. I'm using orange plexi wire for the accent parts and regular black PLA for the front frame. Accent parts are printed on my custom Ender switch wire with M4 extruder. I've equipped my printer with Fetu Stachy Hotten with 0.6 nozzle. On my build plate I have Creality Texture Paint which gives my printed parts unique look. I've prepared my G-code files using Super Slicer. I've set the layer height at 0.18mm and used supports only touching build plate. There is some stringing on my parts, but it can be cleaned off. In the meantime, I'm printing my black parts on my backup printer, Flashforge Finder. I've got my parts stored in a built-in memory, which lets me mass print them fast. After an hour or two, my prints are almost finished. The front frame took a bit longer to print since I've set the quality on highest settings. All the parts have been printed and now I can begin to tidy them up. There are a lot of blobs on my orange part but that's how my hot end works. I've tried to calibrate it but that's how far it goes quality wise. The black parts have some stringing as well, but the quality is noticeably better. I'll start by removing the support on the orange parts. I will use small pliers and a modeling knife. For the smaller sections it's great to have a scalpel. After removing the support material and blobs, I use small blowtorch to make the plastic shiny again. The other arm uses pretty much the same process, remember to be extra careful near the hinges. Both orange parts are pretty much ready to be installed. For the front frame I use the scalpel as there are many tight corners and round edges. Remember to be extra careful with the scalpel, I cut myself so you don't have to. After removing excess plastic I can use the blowtorch to hide the scratches. Both hinges use piece of filament as an axis. It's pretty much easiest way to make something move using only plastic parts. You can help yourself using pliers, but be careful not to put too much pressure on the plastic. After you put the filament through all the parts, cut off the longer end. And now you can melt both filament ends using your spare soldering iron. This will prevent the filament piece from sliding out. After combining both pieces, move the arm in and out a couple of times. 
This will make the arm move more freely later on. Now it's time for the hardest part, fitting the electronics in the right arm. This part requires three really thin wires, look up thinner wire. I'm cutting them way too long so I can adjust them later on. After cutting the wires, put them through the small hole in the arm. It might be hard to do on the first try, so take your time. After a while, I now have three wires sticking out of both ends. Now I can solder the wires to the display driver board where connector used to be. You need to connect the wires to the first and last two pins on the board. I'll put the pinout picture on the screen, feel free to pause the video to solder it. It's really easy to solder the wires, but don't put too much heat on the pins, heat will remove them from PCB. After soldering all three wires, you can put the board inside the plastic part. It's a great idea to label all the wires on the other end so you won't mistake them with each other. Putting the board inside the plastic is tricky, so do it slow and if you feel any resistance, stop what you're doing. It's really easy to tear off one or two pins when putting it inside. You can gently tuck on the wires to make it a bit easier to put it inside. There was some resistance when I put it inside, so it's best that I now check if it works. I've temporarily soldered the wires to my Raspberry Pi Zero. It's the easiest way to see if it still works. It's a bit out of focus, but it works alright. I've bought a couple of the 3.5mm jack breakout boards, which will work as a video cable connector. Those are really cheap and available in great quantities, so I could include them in my Etsy kits. Boards have 4 pins, but I will use only 3 of them. The board is meant to be installed directly on top of the cables. 
You can actually put the board inside the plastic first and then solder the cables on top of it. This is how it looks like soldered. I've used a wrong pin here so don't solder it exactly like I've did. I've put the correct soldering diagram on the screen. After soldering the cables you can now use your spare soldering iron to attach the cover. It's a really thin piece so don't overheat it. And here it is with cover on. I've left a small window so I could probe the wires. Now it's time to assemble the display module. The magnifying piece came as a part of the display, so if you bought the display then you've already got it. The flat cable was both separate, it's 33 pin with 0.3mm pitch and 100mm length. I'll start by pushing the display into the frame. The flat cable is tricky to put inside, so take your time. It's really easy to destroy it in the process. Before installing the magnifier, put both front lenses into the frame. Front lenses come with blue protection film on both sides, remove it carefully. The left lens should pretty much go right in. If there's any pushback then check the lens orientation. The right lens should be put diagonally front way down. This one takes some force to be installed. After installation you can wipe the smudges with lens wipes. The combiner piece is secured with yellow Captain tape, it prevents it from scratches. Remove both sides carefully before installation.
Check it for smudges and wipe if necessary. Don't use alcohol, it will destroy it. Now you can push it inside the combiner groove. There can be some pushback on the frame side, so be gentle. Now you can install the magnifying piece. And now it's time to connect the right arm with frame and flat cable. Use a scalpel to open the ribbon cable large. Be extra careful, don't push it in. After it's open, connect the flat cable and close it. You can get part of the cable out of the frame for easier assembly. After you have it connected, push the whole thing into the frame. Now you can use a piece of filament to make a hinge. Now you can attach the display cover. It's pretty much finished now. It looks really nice. You can add optional lens stoppers, which will prevent front lenses from falling out. I've used my spare soldering iron to secure the stoppers on top of the lenses. I've attached my video cable to the Raspberry to show you how it works. Later on there will be dedicated HDMI cable. Here you can see that it's in fact working. It looks way better in person. I plan to sell whole assembled glasses in future, so if you can't make them yourself, you could buy them. There are also Etsy kits live right now. Huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my project. It wouldn't be possible without you.
files are already available on my Patreon. Thanks for watching.